welcome to Pot Sauce, guys, your podcast discovery show. I am Alicia Renee. And I'm Dax Holt. And like she said, your podcast discovery show, because that is why we are here. There's 3 million podcasts out there, 50 million episodes, so much to go through. So we're trying to do it for you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Simply put. But you're you are welcome. Mo- you are most welcome. <laughs> okay? I, I think you put it really well the other day. You're like, we're like the what the, the trailer of podcasts like we actually you said that but thank you for giving me the credit white man that's a first <laughs> that is a first that the white man said you know what black lady you have the credit you came up with the phrase it was you but thanks boo <laughs> Thanks, boo. So we are just, we're just trying to make people's lives easier. They got yeah. a lot going on. They got time to listen to all the episodes. No, so no. That's why we're here we're to here. do that. We're doing God's work. We really are. Yes. <laughs> and you are most welcome. We got a really good done in a day. 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 day. <laughs> <laughs> That was our first time doing it. It was pretty smooth. We did smooth. good. Yeah, but I was trying to go with the dun 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 dun, uh-huh. and you kind of got off beat a little bit. But it's to be expected because white. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because white. It's okay. <laughs> we'll get you on beat pretty soon. Get to your done in a day. It's really good. I think you actually will like it. One because the episodes. I don't think there are any episodes that are over thirty minutes off the top Boom. of my head. In the apology line. So the Apology Line, hosted by Marissa Bridge, uh, it's it's a derivative of, the, so back in New York in 19-something-something, I don't want to lie to you. <laughs> Got 19, all the details, don't you? 19-something-something. <laughs> well, because that part doesn't matter, right? <laughs> but there was this guy who was like, yo, if, if you have a confession, if you have something you want to get off of your chest, dial this number and you can talk to me he like was, no names like you don't have to say who no you are names you don't have to you don't have to disclose i am just your portable priest that you can confess whatever it is you want to confess to from petty theft to robbery to murder most foul <laughs> so this covers your true crime for all ah. your true crime addicts this has an element of that in there um the episode well, is this guy I just like to, a lawyer like that sounds fun to me like yeah Here's a number. Just just call me. Tell me all your creepiness. He said he had a voyeur in it. That sounds fun. (laughs) Good for you. Good for you, Denise. Good for you, sis. Good for you. Um, (laughs) But yeah, the episode I listened to was episode four, To Catch a Serial Killer. So good. Um, It talks about Richie, who's the serial killer. I think Richie is actually the um, an alias because as you listen to episode four and then going into episode five, uh, more details kind of like come along. But basically, Alan, who was at that time known as Mr. Apology, um, his wife, Marissa, is his wife. She just recounts like some of his stories that were the most impactful to him and how it basically her husband was just so involved in Mr. Apology and his space that it kind of took away from like their marriage and you know it kind of devolved in a lot of ways so you'll definitely have to listen to it it's a twofer you know it's the intimate aspect of it but also kind of like a follow-up on some of his most pivotal pivotal you know I'm from the south I got this accent that keeps me from being great sometimes (laughs) but some of his most pivotal phone calls and it sounds super fascinating and it's funny because she seems like she has the better end of it, even though screwed up their marriage. But mm-hmm. I mean, as much as I don't want to sit on the phone for a long time, I'd rather just be like, uh, give me, give me the cliff notes. Yeah. How juicy was this phone call? Yeah. So. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I'm into it. Kind of like it really depends on how you look at it. But yeah, like you know, she didn't have to do all the heavy lifting like he did, and so you get to hear like the actual tapes from the phone calls. They from have the tapes. Actual yes. tapes yes. from. You know, Wait, he was recording and, all this? Yeah, I mean, they knew, you know what I mean? So, but again, I really think, especially those out there who are huge fans of true crime, start at episode four to catch a serial killer because it follows Richie and how that whole situation flushed out. Mm-hmm. You can hear his phone calls. He's got 30 bodies on him. You know, he talks in detail about what he's done to some of these people. And I'm, I don't want to give it away, you know, but obviously the big payoff is, did they catch this fool? We got mm-hmm. to get this. I almost said it, but then I caught myself. We have to get this person. This. This ninja. We got to get this ninja. I could say ninja. <laughs> we got to get the ninja off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's me editing. 
eat myself. It's a ninja. <laughs> Put the cue the graphic. Well, I, I I'll, I'll check it out, and as, especially if you like it, it yeah. it'll probably because we are the same person essentially. One thousand percent. Essentially. One thousand percent. So I'll check that. This you said episode speak, four. This should speak to your inner black woman. All right. Um, <laughs> but I I think that this you'll like this because again the episodes aren't super long. I think there's only like, you know. Uh, nine episodes I want to say but they're not long I mean okay. again um, I I was put on to uh, this podcast just as I was like trying to find what speaks to me I'm a lover of true crime and just when I saw like the apology line I was like oh this is dope okay so it's the apology line the apology line done in a day 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 day that's how it's supposed to go Good grief. You right. can lead well, we, them to water. We got a lot more coming up on this episode. We've got um, Spider One. Spider One. Spider One. Do we call him Spider? We well, he gave us. I'm going to call him Spider. Mr. Spider. Mr. Spidey. Spidey. I like it. Uh -huh. So we got. He's coming on. He has a podcast called Bleeders, Bleeders Digest. Digest with a capital on D I E. Did you see that? Yeah. And for some people, you may recognize the name because he is Rob Zombie's brother. Mm -hmm. He's done a ton. He's writing all kinds of stuff, all kind of scripted stuff. I think he's got a movie script in the works. He does. Um, but he also does this project with friends to the show, yes. uh, Trevor Shan from the Boo Crew. So I think I'm really excited to sit down and speak with him. That'll be a good episode. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, you know, we like to sit on the like the fringe of creepiness. We're on the outside. We don't really like, we don't let the demons in here. We don't like to be immersed. But we like to hear maybe what they've done outside of the, we want to outside be of this. We want to be adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> we like to be nice demon adjacent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Caspers are welcome. <laughs> so we got him coming up in the show. And uh, and then I think we've got it. If you like this, you'll like that mm -hmm. later. And we got a pick from you, right? Yeah. Uh, so? No, it's your turn. Is it my turn? It's, a, it's fully your turn. You better be bringing the heat today with your see. pick. I'm going to see what I feel in my spirit. <laughs> So, uh, if you haven't gone to the uh, to our website, podsauce.com, check it out. Sign up for our newsletter so we can send you all of our goodies from every episode and, uh, and you can be a part of the show. In the meantime, guys, don't go anywhere because we have more. This is Pod Sauce. Welcome back to Pod Sauce. I'm Dax Holt. I am Alicia Renee. It is time for Alicia's Pick. This is one of my favorite segments because Alicia and myself, we bring our picks to you guys as well as each other. Mm -hmm. Kind of something that we're listening to, we're enjoying, maybe we just Stumbled finished, upon. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you guys will enjoy it. So what's your pick this week? So this one, I actually was drawn to this story because uh, it's been in the news. Uh, my pick, actually, I'll start there. My pick is the Murdaugh murders. Not to be confused with the Murdoch like, family. <laughs> that's extra, I'm so like, <laughs> The Fox people? No, 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 no. Not That's those, the not those people. Yeah, th those are the Murdochs. This is the Murdaw. Murda. Adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You say it like that. Why? When you say it like Murdaw. That's what's going on Murda. right now in that family. Murder. <laughs> most foul. <laughs> they Although literally, this isn't their that. last name is Murdaw. They're telling what, you what, what it is. What did you think was going to happen? They're telling you what it is. You better. Aha. <laughs> Somebody is using that noggin. You better get to it. It's rare, but we're going to try. I mean, you're on it today, Dax. Because I, 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 when you said it like that, I'm like, that's right. It does kind of sound like that. Now that you threw me completely off my kilter. So the murder murders? Yeah, the murder murders. The murder murders. Murder. It covers, uh, it, it, she starts back in 2019 where, um, was her Mallory Beach, excuse me. She died in a boat crash. That, the boat was owned by the Murdoch family. Um, he's the Murdoch family's in the news right now because Alex, the patriarch, well, the current patriarch of this particular sect of the family, because they're a huge conglomerate in South Carolina. They're very prominent, um, you know, liaisons basically to the district attorney's office. So that's why there have been so many unsolved murders in the Murdoch family and around. They're connected to government. They're super connected. So there's been cover ups. There have been people that. Uh, have found it really challenging to speak up about what's going on within this family out of fear of retribution. Some people have come up missing, you know, and so. Well, I would think if I'm in the family, I'm not speaking up. I'm uh, not going to be the snitch because you know what happens. Snitches get stitches. You know, it's clearly the thing in that family. One thousand percent. But that's one of the things that it, it's such a stereotype. Um, when you hear about powerful families that are wealthy, that are super well connected, how they just seemingly get away with murder. 
And so this investigative podcast, um, it covers that. It covers the death of Mallory. And, you know, uh, there's actually pe some people think that this is what triggered Alex to, in a weird way, um, allegedly uh, facilitate his own killing. Basically, himself? like, yeah, I mean, he's alive right now because it was, you know, whoever he hired, he probably didn't pay the full fare before. So you, <laughs> they, they think that he hired his own hitman? Yeah, they think that he hired his own hitman so that the remaining son, because his wife and son, Maggie and Pat Murdaugh, they were murdered. That crime hasn't been solved yet. So he was going to off himself. Yeah. What is happening? Yeah, this for the is insurance crazy. money. So that allegedly. He doesn't get any insurance money. Uh, his son. There's one son that's alive, you know, and so he was going to. It's alleged that he facil that he facilitated his mur his his suicide so that his son can collect on the insurance. Again, this part of it we have to say for legal purposes, and I can already hear Meredith in my head. Um, you know, <laughs> allegedly, um, but all the other aspects of the case uh, are still revolving. So the Murdaugh murders, I just love a good murder most foul. I love a good whodunit. I love a good succession meets yeah. law and order. You know what I mean? Uh, succession is a show on HBO, which I'm obsessed with. Well, it sounds, I mean, just from what you're explaining and all the tie-ins and this Murder, and that, intrigue, power, I, status. I mean, what more do you crime junkies want? Get into it. <laughs> <laughs> the right. Murdaugh murders. All right, if you want to listen to the Murdaugh murders. Murdaugh murders. <laughs> Which is this week's pick by Alicia. Yes. Head on over to podsauce.com. We'll have a link right there directly to it. And then also, don't forget, sign up for our newsletter. I'm always harping at you guys to sign up for the newsletter. Yeah, it Dax is the... wants to be able to give that to you guys. Yeah. He wants to I get on his bike deliver it. and hand deliver it to your homes like a but good that's, little... That's that's what a good host does. Yes. Just delivering the information. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, head on over to podsauce.com. Videos, links, everything is there what? for you. We will be right back. Why this is I... Pods. Why am I imagining you on a bicycle with an elf hat? An elf hat? <laughs> That's not even stylish. Just delivering our newsletter. Oh, God. Welcome back to Pod Sauce, guys. I want you guys to meet this amazing man because we got an opportunity to talk to him before we got this thing going. Love his energy. He already threw shade, so he's in my book. Uh, <laughs> A real one, a Spider One, a host of Readers, no, Bleeders, Bleeders Digest. Digest, Spider. Yes. What's up, Spider? D I E Jest. What's up? Thanks for having me. I'm glad that we uh, got the audio working. And, uh, <laughs> Still shading us. You didn't have. I to, imagine. <laughs> you didn't have to tell him what it was exactly. I feel like the <laughs> honesty with your audience is very important. Fair, very fair. So it was our first time zooming, basically, is what it felt like. Yeah, we but we today. got the kinks out, and we're here, and we're running now. Yeah, there were like I just kept seeing people in the in this you know in the screen like hold on, what second? You, you got it, you got it. And the best part, we have all these cables, all these connections, and all it was is unmute. Unmute. <laughs> Just, we were I could mute. see it. I, I could see it on the screen. It said that you were muted, but I couldn't tell <laughs> you. Couldn't tell us that we're <laughs> muted. I was just about to say, well, how anyway. come you didn't tell us that we were on mute, Spidey? Come on. Well, <laughs> I was amused. I was amused by the whole thing, honestly. <laughs> Fair. Well, thank you again for joining us. Um, I was listening to your podcast this morning, and it is creepy. You do some amazing. So, for people who haven't listened to Bleeders Digest, it is. Story, it's scripted stories that I believe you came up with, and you ha are having voice actors act out the different parts. What's well, him, and it's also our people from the Boo Crew, you know, Trevor, Trevor. and his wife. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, they there's, also uh, there's, there's four of us. Yeah. Uh, it's myself, it's Chrissy Fox, and uh, Trevor and Lauren Shand. And we, we uh, started this thing. Uh, yeah, and it, and it, you know, there's a lot of narrative fiction uh, storytelling. Uh, podcasts but there aren't a ton of them that are completely original like a lot of them they're taken from folklore or from you know stories off of reddit or whatever and they you know and they read them but we were like i guess ambitious enough and dumb enough to decide we were going to do all original you know <laughs> write a new story every single week uh and and voice them a lot of the voices we do ourselves and then we bring in some some guest uh uh, friends of ours, like uh, we had Bonnie Aarons who played the nun in the Conjuring movies and the nun movie. We have 
Scout Compton, who was in the Rob Zombie's Halloween movies. And so we bring in our friends to uh, also contribute. And yeah, we've created this cool catalog of just all original terrifying tales. And uh, and it seems to like be catching on and, um, and kind of blowing up. So we're excited. Well, you know what I love uh, about Bleeder's Digest? I listened to the episode where, <laughs> I, one, I love how immersive, uh, audibly immersive these episodes are. It really takes you into the space and in the world. Yeah. I listened to the episode where the guy uh, who's a poet and he wanted to sell his soul to the devil, you know? Right. And even when you listen to, because as an actor, I can appreciate it. So I was listening to it, one, as a consumer, and then two, just as an actor, right? What, what are the theatrics going to be, right? And it was so beautifully produced and performed. And I didn't know you played the devil in this episode, because listening to you now, I'm listening to that, two completely different people. So I don't know if there's yeah. two people living in that head of yours. or. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in that, that episode, I played the devil and I played Jonathan Penny, the writer. Are you poet. kidding me? That was both you? Yeah, so that was both of them. That was, that was me doing both of them. Oh, I got to uh, give you your props on so, that one. Uh, and let, yeah. let me tell people, if they want to listen to that episode now that we're talking about it, yeah. it's the one, it's the buzz of the last dying fly. So that's the one where he's playing the devil and the poet, the two main yeah. characters. I, I, but I, you know what? It's so funny, Spider, to hear you say that. Now that I know that you played both characters, I have a whole new respect for you as an actor, because the way you were able to showcase the ebbs and flows and how demure and, you know, kind and needing that, uh, you know, what's his name again? The poet. What, Jonathan. Jonathan. How uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Penny. Mm -hmm, yeah. How Jonathan was to how when he felt like, but you said you loved my writing, right? So you need to do this for me. Like he just became like this gremlin. <laughs> you know, yeah. just with this thirst and this, and then when the devil, without giving him, without giving, I guess I'm giving it away, but you, listen to it because you have to hear it That's for okay. yourself, guys. Yeah. But, you know, when the devil gave him, and he said, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do you a fresh one. I'm going to show you what's going to happen if you make this deal with me. And he touches him, and you guys have to hear that part for yourselves because it just becomes, it's super immersive, mad creepy, like super eerie because my mind instantly went to every single thing the devil was saying in that space. And the decision that Jonathan comes to after that, unfortunately, a lot of people will still, they would do the same thing. It was nuts. So to hear your highs and lows as, as all, as both characters, I mean, kudos, dude, kudos. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a that was a that was a really fun one to do. And you you're right, the the sound design, which uh which Chrissy does, which is one of our partners, she is crazy. Like she'll she does all the sound design for us and um as well as acting out characters and writing the stories. But that was really one of the main things we wanted to achieve, you know, sort of hearkening back to old school radio drama, yeah. right? When, and and it's a really it's a challenging thing to do because you know, you know. You don't have those visuals to to rely on so you have to get really creative in the way you describe things and uh the way you tell the story um because yeah you can't fall back on oh we're just going to show this so everyone will understand it so it, it takes on a whole different challenge of trying to put these things together and uh i have to urge you if you do want to give one more episode a listen yes the tapes of king's chapel is the next one okay. you must listen to it's episode five and it does deal with a certain level of possession. Oh my uh, god! So you're yeah. nuts, Spider. <laughs> you are so nuts. You know, so I I listened to another episode, and to be honest with you, this is the first scripted podcast I've listened to. I've I haven't really dove into acting and like listening to people act on podcasts. It just hasn't been my thing. Um, but it was really interesting. I listened to the Decker House episode. Oh yeah. That one creeped me out. And so the funny thing, so I'm listening to it. It's early in the morning. I, I will go for my run and listen to podcasts. And yours is the one I was listening to. I go for this long run. It's eerie out. It's foggy. It's dark. Good luck. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I get back into my house, and it's right at the climax of the Decker House story, which involves a dude with an axe chopping people up. I mean, it's, it's so insane. And my son comes around the corner with a blanket on his head like oh a freaking God. ghost and scares the crap out of me. 
<laughs> and it was just, it all worked together. And so, I mean, your writing is just so good. And I know that you are writing a lot. Is this a collaborative process when you write these? Is this all in your head? How do you come up with all of these stories? Yeah, good question. I don't know. You know, no, we, we each write our own story. Uh, stories, The Decker House, that's another one that I wrote uh, and played uh, the husband in that one. Um, but yeah, we each, I, you know, it's it's interesting when you, that's the big question, right? Where do these ideas come from? Whether it's writing a story or writing a song. And I think sometimes it's, you know, not to get too like new agey or whatever, but it's, it's ideas just, they come to you if you're open, you know what I mean? The worst thing I, I find that the, the thing that holds me back from being creative is when I sit down and go, I'm going to be creative. Now I'm going to come up with a song or I'm going to come up with a story or I'm going to, you know, paint a picture. And uh, I think that it's just, you sort of let these things happen. And, uh, and then it's just up to you to sort of, you know, come up with a beginning, a middle and an end. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just the, the universe throws weird I mean, it, does, it doesn't hurt that, I mean, ever since I can remember, you know, I, I've always been since the earliest of, you know, childhood interested in comic books and science fiction and horror movies. And, you know, I was watching the craziest stuff when I probably shouldn't have been when I was really, you know, and, and so I've just always had that fascination with uh, that sort of like just the, like otherworldly stuff you know is this is this a family thing because i think for people that <laughs> might not know you are rob zombie's brother so is this right. something that you guys grew up in a household that was into i don't know some of these like horror movies and like that kind of thing halloween had to have been popping at that house yeah i mean the funny <laughs> thing is is that we grew up in a you know, we're only a couple of years difference in age so we, we grew up loving all the same stuff but the funny thing is we grew up in a household that was about as normal as you could possibly have. I mean, we didn't, my, my parents weren't into it. They weren't artists. They weren't, my dad worked in a furniture factory for his entire life. My mom, you know, stayed home with the, raised the kids. And, and there wasn't a lot of that around us. And we grew up in a small town where there really wasn't anything to do. Um, so TV and music was really like this gateway to the world, you know, that there were other things out there other than this little town that we lived in, you know? And so we were, I mean, we watched everything and anything, you know, and growing up in the, you know, seventies and eighties, you know, there was a lot of crazy content. I don't know, you know, if you guys remember, like even Saturday morning cartoons were all like, Super graphic and inappropriate. Well, they were like groovy ghoulies and yeah. monster and then Sid and Marty Croft puffing stuff and all these trippy like you know uh all this trippy content and it just like i said it just opened up the world and i was just like there's something out there other than you know working in a factory and so you know i just credit yeah we would watch you know and it was also the time of of going to the video store and heading straight to the horror sci-fi section and looking for the most ridiculous box artwork you could find and this we're gonna watch basket case oh my god this looks amazing you know, and taking it home and just watching the most inappropriate weird stuff kids these days will never know the joy of going to blockbuster and picking <laughs> out like your tape that you know of a movie that you want to watch uh do you guys in the writer's room at bleeders digest uh have like a friendly competition to out horror each other is, you know, uh, <laughs> is, is there any of that going on back there because it's probably yeah probably i would i mean i think everybody wants to shine and, and everybody does i mean every, and, and it's interesting because everybody has their their own voice you know and uh you know and it's cool that we have two two women and two men and so it has a different perspective yeah. sometimes right you know you know uh, obviously you know the the female writers and bleeder just tend to favor female lead characters and so it, it gives a great balance to what we do and everybody has their own style and approach and so um scariest episode yeah. on the podcast in your opinion i mean i there's a couple uh i think that a lot of people have talked about tapes of king's chapel because i think we all have this this under you know being possessed in some level is i think something that we all ever since the exorcist came out you know, we're all terrified of um, so that one is a lot of people go to that one. There's another episode that a lot of people find really difficult to get through. 
and it's called My Sick Little Friend. My Sick it's Little basically What? basically My Sick Little Friend. Okay. Uh, and that one is, that's a tough listen if you're sensitive because it's basically, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of narrated by a, a serial killer. And he why, just, why am I writing this down? In real life? Uh, why am I writing that? I'm not going to let that. It sounds freaky as hell. You got to no, listen no, to it no. now. I mean, thank you yeah, for so the that recommendation. One is, uh, that I'll one let someone is, that else check a, it that out. That one's got some pretty graphic uh, descriptions. Who plays stuff. the so, serial yeah, killer? He actually, uh, a, an actor by the name of Adam Bush, who he's been in a bunch of stuff. He's probably mel most well known. He was um, on that show Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh -huh. for a bunch of seasons. So he's uh, he's a good friend of ours, and so he um, he does a great job. He's like, he kind of seems like a serial killer in real life. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm Don't saying? You have to try very hard on this one. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you being consumed in writing all of these stories and voicing, I, I can't imagine it leaves you much time to listen to other podcasts, but is there any other podcasts that you listen to that you think, oh, people need to listen to it, it's amazing. We are a podcast discovery show, so I think kind of yeah. giving suggestions I mean, yeah, other you're right. I, I don't have a ton of time, but yeah, there, well, I mean, of course I have to give a shout out to our partners in the Boo Crew who yeah. do a, a podcast, but there is an interview-based podcast interviewing, you know, directors, writers, actors from some current horror movies. But there is this one other podcast that I was actually was uh, lucky enough to be a guest on called the uh, Bigfoot Collectors Club. And it's uh, hosted by uh, a friend of mine, Bryce Johnson, who's an actor and uh, in, 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 a, in a couple other actors. And uh, they basically just dive into all things paranormal and weird and you know unexplained mysteries of the world, whether it be Bigfoot, you know, ghost uh, situations or weird, weird folklore things that I've never even heard of, like this uh, skunk monster, or all these crazy things that people are, you know, in investigating throughout the world. And they do a great, like, deep dive into this stuff. And, um, and Bryce also is, uh, he's on a, a, a Bigfoot uh, show on Discovery. So he's like, he's fully invested in this stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I had a chance to go on there and tell some uh, some real life um, ghost stories that I had been a part of. So, if you wait, get a chance you had to... encounters with ghosts. Yeah, I uh, listen. If we, if we had another hour, but I can tell. Here, when are you coming here. back, Spider? Because you need to be here in person, like Trevor. Yeah, I want no, these I, you would not believe. Uh, listen, I w I've always been a person in life that sort of my take on unexplained things is that I don't know. If you want to check out Spider's podcast, uh, Bleeders Digest, you can obviously head on over to podsauce.com. We will have a link there directly for you to head you to that podcast. Check it out. And then we'll even highlight some of the episodes they talked about, like the, the tapes of the King's Chapel. I want to check that one out. Yeah, but also in the in the episode that uh, that I watched, because I think that it was just so, so beautifully immersive. I mean, well done. It was just so good. So good. I could... Again, you know, as an actor, and I love scripted podcasts. This was a good one. You didn't let me down. You didn't let me down, Spider. Thank you. Appreciate so, that. I'm glad. <laughs> glad that you uh, approved. I thank, do. Thank I you do. for joining us. And uh, we got a lot more coming up on Pod Sauce. We will be right back. Welcome back to Pod Sauce, guys. I'm Alicia Renee. And I'm Dax Holt. You have a, a if you like this. You like that. I mean, I'm doing it this time, so I feel that it is only <laughs> necessary for me to steal the second line from you. I feel like at one point, I just want to get out. If you like this, you'll like that. <laughs> if you like this, you'll like that. If you like this, you'll like that. So yes, I have a, if you like this, you'll you like will that. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still just couldn't let it, it go, just couldn't let it. it go. I gotta be petty. petty. All right, so we here at Pod Sauce mm -hmm. believe, strongly believe yes. that if you like Anna Ferris's unqualified okay. that you will like Midnight Snack with Michelle Collins. Go. So Michelle Collins, she's a comedian. You may know her from The View. She was a host on The View for a little bit. She mm -hmm. has a Michelle Collins show. She has a podcast. Um, it's a late night podcast, but basically it's riffing on the week's biggest stories in entertainment news, and she has a bunch of celebrities that will come on, and they'll just they'll just kind of talk about everything. So it's a long format interview show mm -hmm. with celebs. She's had like Julia Stiles on, and you know, do you know Julia Stiles? She's an I actress. Know Julia. Did you play me like that? I know Julia Stiles. I it was Ten literally a question. I hate about yes. You. Yes. I mean, she hasn't 
She, has she done anything in a while, though? Whatever. I digress. <laughs> was that Shay? No, it wasn't Shay. I was just trying to think of, like, we're, we're talking about 10 <laughs> things I hate about you, and I'm like, we just referenced a movie that was, like, 30 years old. 50 million yeah. years ago. That's fair. But, yeah, I think she is on a project for, for whatever reason. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I, she is books and busy. Okay, okay. all right. So, not at home Ju- her thumbs. <laughs> so, Julia stopped by the podcast, and they were talking about kind of everything from, like, Memories from their favorite college bar to mm-hmm. like hot firefighters at the dry cleaner. They they literally she just kind of gets into everything with these celebs. And it's I didn't know Julia went to college because she got her career really early. Uh, her starting her career really early. So I'm definitely gonna have to take a listen to that episode. Yeah. So, so you know, Anna Faris is very similar. It is talking with celebs, diving into their lives, and so Michelle, she's very funny. Same concept. So. Mm-hmm. That is why we believe, if you like Anna Faris's Unqualified, that you will like Midnight Snack with Michelle Collins. Well, I'm going to have to check that out uh, for sure, because like I said, Julia Stiles got such an early start in her mm-hmm. career. I'm always curious about celebs that uh, pump the brakes on their successful careers to have some normalcy and like go to college. I'm looking at you, Claire Danes. You know, um, I'm, I'm, int- I'm very curious ab- about that. I think uh, Macaulay Culkin did the same thing, too. Uh, Jaleel White. So yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. So if you guys want to get uh, more information and a little deeper of a dive into Dax's pick, go to podsauce.com, sign up for our newsletter while you are there so you can get information on all the podcasts that we spoke about on today's show. And big thank you to Spider One from Bleeders Digest for stopping by blessing us with his crazy blonde hair, which is so fun <laughs> to look at the whole interview. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're at the Pod Sauce on IG, and you can check us out on Facebook. and Insta- I mean, we're, we're everywhere. YouTube, if you want to watch us, if you're listening to us right now, but you actually want to see what we look like, you can head to YouTube and find uh, Pod see Sauce. See why my wiki feet score is a 5.0? <laughs> you log on, buddy, and get you some. Uh, you can <laughs> find me at Dax Holt. And I am at I am, <laughs> and I am at I am Alicia <laughs> Renee. I really got to get Alicia you Renee back. Fix that girl. This is ridiculous. Uh, until the next time, thank you guys so much for joining us. Be good to yourselves. Bye.